Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we can make a make a start, can I start by welcoming all the members of the of the public and the press? This is a a, a press conference to launch the campaign of Stuart Blackmore, who's the Labour candidate for the Isle of Wight. Um, Stuart was selected uh, about a year ago, and since then he's knocked on thousands of doors, and we've all delivered thousands of leaflets on his behalf. And I know his campaign has been really going very well. Um, so thank you all for coming. At the end of Stuart's um, short speech, we will uh, <laughs> uh, we'll take questions from the press. But if any members of the public have any questions, Stuart will be happy to chat to them afterwards. So uh, welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Debbie. <laughs> thank you. The scene shouldn't apologise for the weather, but hey, I mean, Ventnor, the, the reason I wanted to Ventnor is well known, but... Uh, it's one of the more brief days to use an old Scottish thing, so, uh, but I hope it doesn't detract from your, from your visit here if you've travelled from other parts of the island. It's just as I've been to Newport this morning, and it's just as bad there as it is here. But I'm really, really pleased and really glad to welcome you here to the Green Room at the, the Enterprise Centre, part of the new Salisbury Garden, which uh, has been... This is the result of work which has been going on for the better part of a year now, and it just shows... It's a perfect example of really how public partnership works uh, with the private here at, at, at no cost at all to the ratepayer or the precept here. So I think it's a wonderful a wonderful uh, building and a lovely room for things like this and I hope that people will take advantage of it uh, going forward. This is a true uh, example of how localism works, true localism coming down to the local authority and allowing them and giving them the power to do exactly what it is that they feel that the local people need. Uh, I, I did speak to, uh, if you'll allow me to name drop a little bit, Hillary Benn at the Labour Party conference towards the end of last year, and Labour really is a very keen and, and serious localism, bringing things, even planning applications, uh, right down to local level to be decided by the people who live here, and not people either at County Hall or at uh, or in London. So um, that's very a very good initiative going forward. Uh, I'm really honoured to have been selected. Uh, by my colleagues Deborah and uh, Peter uh, and taking over from Mark Chilton who was a very very good candidate uh, in, in past elections. Uh, it really is an honour. You, you never think that you've been a long standing member of a party like the Labour Party, especially in somewhere where the Isle of Wight which really has been a Tory stroke of them freedom for so many years that you might ever get the chance to represent your constituencies, your constituents or, or, or even to uh, uh, represent the party. Now I'm really chuffed uh, to be able to stand here uh, having been nominated by my colleagues and, and it's a great uh, they might love to regret it of course but I appreciate the trust <laughs> that they put in me uh, having me uh, do this and what I'm going to do is try my very best to remove what I think is one of the most right wing MPs from Westminster and represent um, the Isle of Wight uh, in the fashion that they deserve and that I know that they need going forward so that's really what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've lived here on the island, mostly in Ventnor, for the last 38 years. My wife, who's at the back of the room there, uh, trying to hide from you all, uh, we met in Shankham all those years ago. Our two children were born on the island, uh, brought up on the island, were educated, more importantly, in the island. Uh, my son joined the army, served his country for seven years, and my daughter is a nurse, having been qualified from Bournemouth University. So we've really got our roots very firmly in the local area. We know what the problems are on the island. We understand the island and we understand the problems of the island having been through uh, uh, most of these things ourselves in the past. Um, so really when people talk about MPs or people who aspire to be, MP, be MPs not really knowing what real life is all about, I have a little chuckle to myself because when I came to the island as a head chef I was really started off chopping potatoes and chopping vegetables, going through the ranks, eventually becoming catering manager at GK in Westland, serving 6,500 workers in the days when it used to be a real industrial force on the island. Uh, sadly, um, not so many people work there now, but uh, certainly in those days uh, it was a huge workforce. Uh, we had 38 staff serving them at that time. So I really understand people's problems coming up from the ground level right up through. And if I am elected, I am. The, the one promise I will make, that even though I'll be elected as a Labour MP, is the fact that I will represent Highlanders truly. I really will represent local people 
halfway at Westminster and use my position and influence here such that it will be to move the island forward as best as I can. Um, that hasn't, in the times that Mr Turner has been MP, uh, really happened, I don't think. Uh, other people might have a different idea, but my certainly my uh, my chin deer on the doorstep says that people uh, are woefully underrepresented on the island. Things haven't really gone the way that it should have done. The, the ferry services, tourism, agriculture, uh, local industry, education, and the National Health Service, I don't think that anybody can say that these things with the possible exception of the next to the health service, and that's because of national government, which for most of these years was a Labour government, obviously, are any better now than they were in those days, certainly as far as tourism and uh, the ferry services are concerned. So, wherever I go, I consistently push the, uh, the island issues. Uh, as I say, I was at, I was at, uh, I was at the party conference recently, and... Uh, the amount of uh, people, members of the Shadow Cabinet, every time they saw me come near them, said, oh God, not the ferries against you, can we just give it a rest for a minute? We know exactly what's, what's going on there, we're, we're having a look at that. Let's talk about something else. But people like Ian Stevens make a virtue of the fact that an independent would be free of the party whip and therefore would seem to have some sort of influence. But now, we know that that's not true. Somebody like Ian Stevens is going to Westminster to represent you people, represent Islanders is going to have no influence whatsoever at the national level. He doesn't, he, although he knows people locally, he doesn't know how things work at a national level. He doesn't have the backing of an organisation be, be, behind him. So I don't think that an independent, apart from the fact that there only have ever been two independent MPs elected in the last 50 years in the whole of the country, he's got a huge ladder to climb. But uh, I'll be campaigning also on national issues, the, Nas the National Health Service, sustainable energy, which is very dear to the heart of a lot of Islanders, the energy price freeze, scrapping the insidious bedroom tax and extending childcare, which are all at the top of uh, Labour's uh, campaign going forward. But I'll be campaigning on local issues as well, like the private rented sector, where tenancies are unstable and expenses, with very few tenants' rights, which is something that really needs to change on the other side. A lot of people are really being hurt by these things and it really has to change going forward. Labour will move to three-year regulated and stable tenancies with control over rent increases going forward. The low-wage economy is a huge problem on the island. In here, Labour has committed to an £8 an hour minimum wage and the abolition of the zero-hours contracts with a move to a living wage as a priority. I would be pressing for all companies with government contracts to pay at least a minimum wage, with the same being expected from local government both here on the island and elsewhere at County Hall, and all public employees, sector employees, with, if necessary, tax incentives to employers during the first year of employment. Rural areas such as the island depend on public transport. If people in lower incomes have to travel a fair distance to work with the expense involved, they become effectively cut off from the labour market. Labour will switch the subsidy to local operators and allow greater competition. One of the examples we can give is a local 31 bus route here in Bretner, which extends out towards St Lawrence. If, say for example, they were allowed to extend that bus route, bus route right through to Bonchurch up to Leeson Road and to Lowderville in the other direction, I'm sure that that would be a great boost for local people and I'm sure that it would be used quite extensively. The island also depends on the ferry services through White Link and Red Funnel. And whatever the government to Dandre Turner says, they are in effect a cartel. I make no bones about saying something like that. I have told them. Uh, in person, my views. They are a lifeline to the mainland and should have a public service obligation. I don't think there's any way that that can be avoided. Similarly, tourists can only access the island via the ferries. Labour will give the transport authorities the power to control fares and service timetables through a regulatory service, something that Andrew Turner and the Tories would never countenance. I know this personally because I've been involved with discussions at ministerial level where Mr Turner has meekly agreed with the minister saying that there would be no regulation of the penny service, despite what the public piece says. And I've also been discussing this with the Labour Shadow front bench <coughs> transport team, and they are determined to prioritise our concerns and to ensure a public service obligation for the ferry companies at the very minimum. I've also been involved with discussions at front bench level about revisiting VAT when it applies to tourism, with a view to reductions in tour tourist-related activities. Again, and I stress this, no independent or green and certainly the present Tory incumbent has ever done anything or could be in a position to do these things and on his record 
Andrew Turner has been no less than enthusiastic about challenging his Tory government on these important issues. Just in closing, Ian Stevens was asked on the Sunday politics and Sunday why he put himself forward. And he said, well, I don't know if he had a little throwaway joke he had in council chamber about a month ago when he said there was only one other brain in the room. He never actually said who the other brain was, uh, although I have my suspicions. But he said, I had a look at the candidates, he said, and I'm really the only one that will make a difference. Well, that's not true, Ian Stevens and Andrew Turner. Stuart Blackmore is the one that's going to make a difference. And I'm going to ask the people on May the 7th to support me and send me to Westminster. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stuart. Can I introduce Ed Pooge, who's the Secretary of the Isle of Wight Labour Party? Ed? Thanks. I just want to say uh, just a few words, and then obviously answer, answer any questions you've got about the campaign on Hustings, Village drop in some of the ideas that we have. Uh, just what I wanted to say was really that when I haven't been here anything remotely like um, <laughs> Stuart has any two or three years really, but coming here with a sort of political background elsewhere, there was a perception I think really that Labour doesn't do it on the island. And a key point I want to make really is this election's different. So the tectonic plates really are shifting. I mean, actually, most of the shifting anyway. You know, <laughs> but uh, politically, they are shifting in all sorts of different ways. I think just so three points on that. Just the first one is that lots of work has been done by Labour in the past. We've done well in local elections very often. But really, we've run, I think, a much more effective campaign than the other parties. We've been out there for nine months now, talking to people, thousands of people on the doorstep, uh, seeing what they think putting forward our policies, getting our message across through literature. So a much more effective campaign. I haven't really seen much of the other parties yet. Second big point is that there's always an anti-Tory majority on the Isle of Wight. We're not like some parts of Surrey and the New Forest and so on. It's always And the Lib Dems have put that together in the past, and the Liberals in the 70s and in 97. But really, the Liberal Democratic decline is happening across the country, but it's particularly dramatic here on the island. And really, as I'm sure people know, um, there's no organisation. They're only just bringing in now a candidate from off the island. Nothing has happened. As far as I don't know how much they can do. They're clearly not going to be the main challenger to the Tories in the way they were in the past. Labour supporters have told us, oh, we've voted tactically for years to try and defeat the Conservatives. This time, they're definitely not going to. They said, we're going to vote for you. We're fed up with the coalition. We're going to vote Labour this time. And we've had Lib Dems coming across to us that are fed up again with the sort of policies the coalition has had. And just the third thing is that if you look at the range of candidates, really, there are very right-wing Conservative and UKIP candidates. They have similar views on coming out of the European Union, privatising the NHS and many other things. And really, Labour is the only alternative to that. So if we don't want a right-wing uh, MP here, uh, you, you know, either Conservative or UKIP, then really Labour's the serious challenger. And I think a lot of progressive opinion, moderate Conservatives, people in the middle ground, are going to come to understand that really, I think, as the campaign carries on. Thanks for that. Thank you, Ed. I think we've covered a kind of pretty comprehensive uh, view of island politics there. So I'd like to open the uh, floor to any questions from the press. Don't be shy. Uh, Simon. Um, you, you said you think you've got a challenge, and certainly look at the numbers from last year, there is a challenge. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the discussion? I mean, I guess Greens is a, is a natural place for a Labour vote as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the national discussions of a Green surge? Uh, well, the Greens certainly are, have had a little bit of such, although they're only between 7 and 11 percent in the polls at the moment, Simon, depending on which poll you look at or, or even believe in. So it's pretty plain that even if uh, uh, the vote does increase, as with UKIP, that they aren't going to have, have any kind of sort of numbers to challenge uh, uh, at Westminster, which is where, where they need to be if, if they are to make a real difference. Uh, they've turned themselves slightly right, over, sorry, beg your pardon, slightly left over the years, uh, bringing themselves uh, a lot closer to Labour uh, as far as that's concerned. And of course, if they were to be elected in sufficient numbers in a hung parliament, then there might be there, there might be something to be said for that. But I don't really think uh, we we really 
believe that the, the, the election is there to be won by Labour, and that we don't think that the Greens are going to be a factor uh, nationally. And clearly the Greens are not going to win, so the choice really is Labour versus Conservative here, I think. You know, the Greens are not going to get enough support to, to beat Andrew Turner, that's quite clear, even if they did do better. And I think we've got a good set of environmental policies, and we've also got radical policies in areas like private rented sector, you know, first action on that yeah. really for a very long time, or jobs and employment that will appeal to people. And of course, I, I, I personally have been a, a little bit at the forefront of green environmental issues uh, uh, privately uh, uh, over the past few years uh, to, to, the, to the happiness of some people and to the complete uh, opposite of some other people. But I really do have, uh, I, I think my green credentials uh, can't really be challenged, especially locally and either way. Stuart, um, Hi. Lucy from Island White Radio. Hi, you are you're talking about overturning a massive majority <coughs> of the Conservative Massive votes. 10, And subsequently, he's had a vote of confidence from the Conservative Party this mm. week. Um, I mean, how are, you, how are you feeling? Was that a vote of confidence? I'm not sure. Some people uh, would disagree with it. Uh, it's a, it is a big majority on the face of it, Lucy, absolutely. But what you've got to remember is when Joe Whelan was a Liberal candidate, she had 22,000 votes. The Lib Dems have collapsed in there right now, they're just not a factor. Poor Reg Barry's playing alone far at County Hall uh, on his own. Uh, now, where are these 22,000 going to go? They're certainly not going to be considering, I don't think, entirely voting UKIP or Conservative. Uh, nationally, we reckon maybe to take maybe between 33 and 35 percent of these voters as natural Labour voters, voters who only voted Lib Dem to keep the Tories out, as Ed alluded to earlier on. People are saying on the doorstep to us, we're going to vote Labour this time, sure, because A, we believe in the candidate, and B, we don't want any kind of a right-wing candidate to take power in there. Why? So I think, I really do think uh, the, the people in charge of opinion polls and things are missing the trick here. I think the other way should really be being treated as a marginal seat, because in my view, that's exactly what it is at the moment. And you're not worried that the vote's going to be split? It depends which way it's split. I'm not worried that it's split. I don't think the Labour vote is going to be split. If we can hold up to what it was before when Martin fought the seat and then add to the disgruntled Tories, the disgruntled UKIPs and, and many from Lib Dems, I think that's only going to increase our vote quite substantially, hopefully, and uh, enable us to make a, 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 real, a real palpable challenge. Thanks. Any other questions from the press at all? No? Okay, we'll take a couple of questions from the public. Asking Mary, had a hand up at the back there. Hi, Mary. Hi, Stuart. Um, yeah, Mary Craven. I was a candidate at the last election, uh, local elections, and a fairly established um, resident in, in my ward. I um, had lived there for 40 years, um, been on parish council, been chair of the parish council. I thought I was a credible candidate. Um, it was quite shocked when um, the UK candidate nearly as many votes as I did. And I think that happened quite by the end of the island. Mm -hmm. um, do you see new kids as a threat this time? Uh, for sure, I do see them as a threat, and, and, and sometimes I face this threat. Maybe I had the same, the same as you at Bentner West when I stood for the county council. I was beaten by a UKIP candidate who nobody knew existed. Who there was no photograph, certainly. He had never visited the ward at all, but even so, he still uh, beat me uh, in, the, in the council elections, which really filled me with uh, despair. Really, that people would, would would vote for somebody that they never they never knew. Uh, let alone put the trust in. And I, 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 we, I don't think we can take UK for granted, but I think this being a national election, the difference will be that they don't have the resources to plough into the constituency that they would have. They'll be, they'll be too busy trying to keep uh, Nigel Farage maybe in second place in Thanet, which is probably about the best he can hope for uh, there. So I don't take them lightly at all. But, it, but the, thing, the other thing is, as is, is, uh, Ed was saying earlier, We've been on the doorstep for nine months now, and we, we, we're not encountering anybody from the other parties really uh, out canvassing. Uh, people are saying, oh, you know, you're the first person we've had knocking on the door, Stuart, you know, you're the others, and that, that, that's, a, that's a fact of the matter. So the, the presence is not uh, as high as, as, as ours is, and we hope that people will remember when they come to put the cross in the paper that, oh, at least Stuart came, made the attempt and came, came to speak to us. I don't know about... Uh, the, the UKIP uh, organisation, but certainly there, there is a, there is a, 
uh, a pool of votes that they, they, they will pick up. But I, I really think that they'll be picking up disaffected Andrew Turner votes, especially given the last three weeks, four weeks that Andrew's had, uh, quite, quite, despite, uh, as Lucy alluded to, his vote of confidence. Um, I really think um, that UKIP would figure at the end of the day. And I, as Ed said, UKIP are not in any case going to be from the government. This has got to be between Labour and Tory nationally. And on the Isle of Wight, it's between Stuart Blackmore and Andrew Turner. That is going to be the fight with Stuart Blackmore coming on top. I think it's just uh, two points there, Mary. One is that as the general election campaign progresses, obviously things are going to focus on well, actually what are the UK policies, isn't it, on NHS economy tax mode. And that obviously didn't come up at all in the local election, so they'll really be pinpointed, I think, and they'll have to answer that. Second thing is the opinion polls have shown they got 13,000 votes here in the European election, which sounds a lot, but the opinion polls are showing, and they're pretty extensive opinion polls, adding them all together, they've shown that UKIP, um, only about half of the people that voted UKIP during the European election are going to vote UKIP in the general election. The rest are going to other parties, some to us, some back to the Conservatives and so on. So that only really gives them a base of 6,500 votes. So very long, there will be that core vote. We meet them on the people on the doorstep that say they're UKIP and there will be that core vote. But they're nowhere near actually winning here, I don't think. Thank you. Any other questions from either the press or the public at all? See. All right. Um, trying to work out how to work this. Um, the, the, the leaders of the political party are possibly all going to be involved in a debate. Would you welcome a debate between the candidates, a public debate, where Andrew Turner and yourself and the other candidates uh, all take? Oh, for sure, sir. I would relish that, absolutely, getting the other candidates on the same platform as me and explain to people uh, with no place to hide, if you like, uh, nobody prompting in your ear and nobody uh, pushing notes in front of you that, 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 that this is a good thing. Uh, whether it will happen on the island, I, I've, I've made clear publicly, and I'll say it today publicly, that I expect the other candidates to take part in hustings, not just one or two hustings, but several hustings at many of the key towns in the Isle of Wight, because people in the, uh, everywhere de deserve to know and deserve to be able to question the candidates and get the answers that they want from them. I think that's very important, and I would challenge them here and now to say publicly whether they're going to do that or not. I certainly will commit to doing that. I think that's an interesting question, Sue, because I've been the candidate before and in 97, and we had two or three hustings a week in the, in the short campaign. And I did think it was quite striking last time that there were maybe one or two hustings and they weren't broadcast. Mm. And I think this is the time that we need to be talking to organisations like Isle of Wight Radio and the County Press to make sure that they do what they used to do and have a, a, a broadcast um, hustings and that local organisations do organise the hustings and invite people and people are obliged to go. It, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do, two or three hustings a week, but it's essential that people are going to have the opportunity to properly see and question the candidates in person and see how they will perform on their behalf yeah, in, in Parliament. I think that's really important. So sure. thanks for, for raising that. I, I think that was a, a real democratic lack last time and maybe a bit of collusion around why that, uh, why that happened. Um, but this time it's got to it's got to happen, I think, for uh, the Isle of Wight to have a, a fair choice. Peter. I've got Peter at the back there, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a challenge to the uh, Isle of Wight Radio and County Press and the other media on the island. It perhaps ought to be them that are organising the hustings so that uh, as many people as possible either see it through the, the media or they see it through, um, and listen to it on the radio. And, I mean, I'm sure Stuart would back the idea of, uh, of the county press or the, uh, the local radio mm. actually having and laying on the hustings. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you entirely. You know, I think the, the, the press are, are maybe viewing, uh, and to my pleasant surprise, the, the county press really also um, in, in recent weeks have been sort of woken up to the realisation that there is a, there has been a problem, uh, especially on the conservative side of things, and, and, and are giving that all due publicity. But, uh, with with Isle of Wight Radio being, I, I mean, I have appeared on Isle of Wight Radio a couple of times, and I'm going to be appearing on them uh, pretty soon again. Uh, so there is that involvement, but I really think it's crucial that the candidates be seen 
by their by their speech and by their body language beside each other, sat on the same platform in front of a, an audience, so that people can form their own opinions about whether they believe them or whether they're talking a lot of old rubbish or whether we say here we go again. But at least the opportunity has to be given there. And I, and I really think I'm, I'm glad, as, as Debbie has just said, that that's been brought up because it's very strongly. Uh, my concern that that should happen, and I'm sure that the, the, uh, the both the printed media and the, and, and the um, the broadcast media will take that on board uh, and uh, approach the. Although I don't know who you'd approach in the um, Turner camp at the moment because they don't seem to have a campaign manager, but um, you know, sure, yeah, I, I don't see how they can say no to that. Uh, uh, this is a democracy, and the best and the most democratic way of addressing people is to speak to them directly. Stuart, uh, uh, Simon. Uh, to put everyone's mind at rest and allow them to sleep. Uh, <laughs> on the way, uh, intending to organise hustings as well. That's excellent news, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thank you, Simon. I've got Robin with his hand yeah, up. Yeah, uh, it's about the green surge thing, really. I think that the Greens, or people voting green, and I mean, they've got a lot of policies I like, but I think they're only going to take away from Labour and really they're going to therefore aid the Conservatives. So I think it's a case of vote green, get blue. And I do think they ought to remind themselves uh, that it wasn't that long ago that the erstwhile husky having, having David Cameron referred to that green crap. Yeah. <laughs> and I really feel that, uh, with, uh, you know, potential green voters, whatever their virtues, should consider the long term uh, of their action. Sure. Uh, how many faces can one man have, Robin, uh, 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 referring to that uh, quote? But uh, you're absolutely right. People have to realise, and, and people like me have to uh, persuade these people that uh, voting green is not going to ensure that you get a government that's going to help you. It has to be either Labour Party or the Conservative Party. I mean, it doesn't matter how, which way you stitch it up, whichever way you pass it, whichever way you post it, there's only ever going to be two people. I know it's an old cliche, it's going to be Ed Miliband or David Cameron, and God help us if it's David Cameron is my, is what I would say. So people have to realise and focus, you know. When I put my cross on that, well, what is the impact that that is going to have? Who's going to go to Westminster? Please don't send somebody to Westminster who's going to have no influence at all because it's not going to work. And I think that here on the island, the Greens cannot put together an anti-Tory majority. There's no way they would. We're the only ones that could put that majority together. Thank you, Ed. Any more questions? Hi, I'm Matthew from the County Press. Uh, Stuart, would you support Fix the Link? A big question. Not the one that, the, that has been advertised recently by the country press. Actually, <coughs> if I can tell you a little secret here, Matt, the Labour Party uh, policy in Ireland is for a fixed link via a rail, tu a rail tunnel, and that was decided uh, decades ago and has never been revisited. And I think it's a debate that has to be had. Uh, I noticed that the county press uh, uh, employer has, uh, has uh, carried a lot of stories recently uh, saying that the, the majority in favour of the fixed link has overturned the majority which used to be against the fixed link, link some time ago. And I think it's something that really has to be... Um, my inclination personally is for a fixed link, I would say that, but that's my personal view. And I, would, uh, and I only say that because I'm from Scotland, as you probably, some of the more astute amongst you have realised by now. But, uh, but there are places where a fixed link is of definite benefit to people. Uh, and I'm not saying that that is the answer here in Ireland. We really need a debate. But at the end of the day, the people in Ireland are going to be the ones who will say yes or no to the fixed link, and we'll whoever, whichever they decide is what is, is the point. It's not going to be a moral question for me. It's going to be a, a practical question. I think really that debate has to take place after the general election. You know, so and that debate has to take place with other white people, and other white people would decide in the end, not the political parties. Thank you. Any further questions? I can't see who that is, sorry. Yeah. That's Christine. Hello. 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 Stuart, the list of issues which the Labour Party is supporting is fantastic. The health service, rents, localism, all are wonderful. But I haven't heard anything about from the Labour Party about the big issues which are worrying people, which is the economy, immigration, and the government. I've come to that in a minute. Now, don't you think the Labour Party should be more open and straightforward about their views on these matters? Mm. If you're the yeah. Everybody's got a time. You know what? 
what's going to happen in five years. Mm. Sure. Well, perhaps you get our information from different places, Christine, but for sure, if, just take them in turn, but immigration is something which possibly the Labour Party could have uh, took a stronger lead in, in the face of the opposition from UKIP. But however, I am, and I'll state it on the public record, an avid pro-European. I always have been, and as far as I can see, unless something very drastic happens, always will be. That, that is my stated public opinion. I think immigration was and is a good thing in inverted commas and I don't see that there, that there was. There are more people claiming unemployment benefit with British passports on the European mainland than there ever has been claiming unemployment benefit uh, who, who were previously resident in Poland, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, you name it, in this country. The, the facts and the figures just don't add up as far as that's concerned, Christine. With regard to the economy, uh, our manifesto is going to be released soon and there's going to be blue, clear blue water to use an old, uh, an old cliche as far as the, the, the economy is concerned. And that's the, the length to which the austerity and inverted commas problem is going to be addressed. Whether it should be a sudden sharp treatment which is paid for by the poor and disadvantaged in this country or the people who can least afford to bear the brunt, or whether, as the Labour Party would have it, that these things are going to be addressed in a longer way the Tories sometimes say that it's uh, like the, the household economy, that you, you, know, you don't overcharge your credit card. Well, I don't say that at all. I say it's more like a mortgage. You look over the long term, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35 years as far as the national economy is concerned, and you, you lay your plans accordingly uh, for the long term. And that's the way that I see things panning out as far as the Labour Party nationally is concerned. And I would support that. That, no, sorry, I, I think Stuart has answered your question. Thank you, Christine. Um, I think we'll call the questions to an end yeah. now and thank everyone for coming. As you can see, we've launched Stuart's press campaign and the sun is already shining. It's a great <laughs> day already. Thank you all very much for coming.